What is up, everyone? We are on episode 8 of the Yugi panel, and we have an amazing guest here. We have Shun Peng Zhu. Is that how I pronounce it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he is here with us. I'm glad I actually reached out to him on his channel. He has a new Yu Gi Oh channel. If you're not subscribed to him, make sure you're subscribed to him right now. Before you even watch this video, subscribe to him. <laughs> you want to, you know, tell the audience who doesn't know Shun Peng Zhu? Tell them about yourself. Who are you? All right. <laughs> So I'm, uh, well, <laughs> I got known much more during the quarantine time. <laughs> I won, yeah, I won UDS Tulsa and I top A at the 3v3 YCS Vegas right mm -hmm. before the quarantine. And uh, it was Dragon Link. That's how majority of people know me. And uh, before that, I've also won YCS Pasadena with Striker during late 2018. And Dragon yeah. Link and Striker are very, very different decks. Do you feel like there's any parallels in between them? Like, if you play Striker, can you learn something about Dragon Link and vice versa? Mm, well, it's like different. Well, first of all, these two are like completely different deck in like right. even categories. Uh, but how I view the the format is like I want to play. Well, first of all, you're gonna find out what's the best card of the format mm -hmm. during like 2018 time. The cards engage. Right. So since since engage was out, I have never not entered a tournament without engage <laughs> in my deck <laughs> until engage is banned. <laughs> right. Until engage is banned, which was like about completely two like whole two years. I've never entered a tournament without engaging my list. <laughs> so did you and, start uh, Yu-Gi-Oh from yeah. that or? No, I started way long time ago. Like okay. I first first of all when I was young, I was like you know. When during like your lower school, like low lower school life, some random kid just brought some random cards to the class, and suddenly everyone's on it. That's that's just how I started. Like like probably same as every every other like majority of people in the game. I, I think. Right. Then I just start know the card, know the game is this. Obviously, we're playing fake cards with like MST and the gay rules, things like those. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, once I get older, I think I came to US around like late eleventh for high school, mm -hmm. and uh, by the meantime, like, well, usually doing doing weekdays, I go to go to school, right? But during weekend, I have like not many things to do. I I'm still like interested in the game, so I was like, I asked my mom to just drive me to like one of the locals in my area, mm -hmm. and I just started play start play locals like sort of half casual, half or. I was not compatible, but I'm trying to be compatible because I like to win, okay. which is very simple. I just right. want to be good. I want to be good, so I want to get new cards, which just automatically put me into the meta, which put me like competitive things. So I just keep repeating that. And I think my first like big event, like for my first YCS, was about early 2014 YCS Chicago, I think. Yeah, it was like a fire water format, I think, after Dragon Ruler was, was gone. Pretty much. That was the slow format, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah, that was, was that, that fire was fist slow, format? Yeah. yeah, it was a fire fist, and uh, it was plus one fire fist and Holbun's like reckless upstar mermail that time. Oh, three upstar, three reckless greed. I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a fun. It was a fun trip. Like I was not really going for the trip, absolutely for the YCS. It was like I think I was senior in high school, so my mom was mm -hmm. like. If I'm down to go to like the college visit around Chicago area, I'm fine going to the YCS after I've done everything. <laughs> so I just did that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> that was my first event. <laughs> that was my first event. <laughs> like the second half of my college trip, I got to go to YCS. Obviously, I wasn't doing well because <laughs> I wasn't that good. But it was a fun experience. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like your mind was more focused on college at the time than the yes. actual YCS. Oh, yeah. You got your priorities straight. Why not both? Like, do college and Yu-Gi-Oh, kids, if you're watching. I mean, that, <laughs> that, that's hard. That's hard. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's very my hard. Mom, my mom does support me. Like, she, she does, like, drive me to locals during, like, weekends and uh, sometimes even send me to, like, nearby regionals. Right. Or YCS, like, like events where I need to fly, that's what, that was the first time. Well, most likely, most, most of them is that that's a college trip, and that's not a YCS trip. Yeah. You <laughs> yeah. remember as yeah, a college trip with the benefit <laughs> of the YCS. 
Well, well, to me, it's a license trip. To her, it's a college trip. Yeah, you have to project that onto them. So they're like, oh, yeah, my son's going to college in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was my first event. Then slowly, I just been going like, because I was in East Coast. So I've been like flying to East Coast events since the flight is like shorter. Right. Um, then I think just been doing that. And uh, let me see. My first top was late 18 in striker form already mm -hmm. uh top 16 at weiss's niagara that was it recently was right? first, that was like two years ago uh, about two years ago oh, two years ago okay, that was it. like that was the first uh the Dan the danger dark world ftk that one. Oh, that format <laughs> yeah it was the first weiss since soul fusion was released it's the first weiss after weiss's 200. Mm -hmm. That was that was my first top. Um, it was it was fun, and uh, my second top, <laughs> a month <laughs> after a month after my first top was my first win. The West is Pasadena. All the way in Cali. Also, yeah, the one in Pasadena, California. Yes. Oh, look at you! <laughs> that was my second top, like Konami top. I have like some like small like regional top regional wins and ARG tops. But my mm -hmm. first Konami, or first and second Konami top were like during like 18. So would it be safe to assume that Sky Striker is your favorite deck? Uh, it was for, for, the, for a very long time until probably Dragon. Okay, which segues very squarely into our next question, which is actually going to be our first question. So <laughs> why play combo? Like, have you ever considered playing other types of decks? I know you already touched upon a little bit of Sky Striker, yeah. but even yeah, like, during, during this format, you choose to play combo instead of like something like Adamant, like Eldritch, rather. So oh, like I, said, like I said earlier, I usually just figure out what's like what's the obvious best card in the format. Mm -hmm. During those years, it was Engage, so I was playing and the deck was Engage, and the top or one was the deck was Engage. For this current format, I think the best cards are like Fiber and Cross. Right. That so, is correct. Yeah. So if you play Fiber or Cross, you play a combo deck. That's why I've been playing combo decks since the, what, the past half year. That's the most interesting this, mindset. Yeah. It's like, it's like you know what's the best thing in the format, right? Right. So you're just going to you're just gonna play something that's going to abuse these cards as, mo as mostly as you can. Where it just all the cho choices that use the like fiber and cross are combo decks. So I'm playing combo decks right now. Oh, like okay. I usually do learn almost every deck or majority of the deck in the meta. Like I know I have my Eldritch, I have my Dogma Invoke, so mm -hmm. I do play those like casually or just uh, at least try to learn it. Like play um, either Yu Gi Oh Pro or Dueling Book or just casually with friends. But whenever I go to a tournament, I know what is the best. And what has the best ratio to win? So I probably gonna play a combo that because fiber and cross. Right. And how long? I know this is a very, a very filling question, but how long do you play per week? Like, how much time do you put into this game? In terms of like um, play testing, deck building, comboing, everything that goes into it, man. See, how long? it's definitely more during quarantine time. Oh yes. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before quarantine, probably uh, oh, let me think. Before quarantine, probably around like two to three hours every day, around that in average. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and during quarantine, probably slightly more than that. Sometimes I like if I just no plan or I'm actually like streaming or just playing, I will spend more time. Mm -hmm. Right, but, of course. Yeah, and but normally I actually don't spend as much as people would think, because I think getting like learning things more efficiently is better than just spending a lot of time and do it inefficiently. Can so you usually like if I? Oh yeah, but, keep going. Sorry, <laughs> keep going. So I was like, I usually just like if I can't really if I feel like a bottleneck, I just stop because I can't really think more. Okay, so I just want to branch off the efficiency aspect. So you're saying, like, instead of spending more time on something, it's better to learn it, like, let's say, the most efficient way. Can you branch off of that and you go? Uh, yeah. So, so it's like whenever, imagine at the beginning of a format, you really can make decisions because you don't have data to support it. Mm -hmm. 
like before like before an event let me imagine like the lcs right it's very hard to make something you think will be optimal before uh, the lcs you probably have to spend 10 20 hours but once the tournament has been done you have the data to support to to analyze what's going to happen you probably in order to get the same kind of optimal optimal results you probably only need to spend what four or five hours at most because a lot of things being proved or being dis like disagreed based on the results from the tournament. Okay. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So you would like, let's say, three quarters of the tournament is... Hmm? Oh, wait, Matt, are you up? <laughs> All right, I'm back. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's up with the internet, but let's say if like three quarters of the tournament, the tops were Eldritch, right? Would you hmm? allocate three quarters of your side deck to specifically the Eldritch matchup? Mm. Or how, how does that thought process work? Uh, that's very, that's very hard to explain because it usually goes into like details and also different based on different decks like playing. Like I played Dragons and Inferno both for the past couple weeks. Like these mm -hmm. are both combo decks, but they're slightly different in terms of like going second. Like Dark Cooler is significantly better in Infernoble just because you can Dark Cooler and still drop gear free easily to out like the Buster Lock. Where right. Dragons, even you Dark Cooler, it's still kind of hard to out the Buster Lock, which means the Dark Cooler really not doing anything at that point. Right. So there's still like these kind of difference. So imagine if like the 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 format <laughs> the the top is like seventy five outlish. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to say. I usually like coverage more than like specific decks. I, I prefer like cards that covers a couple different matchups. Like you will think, let me see, like if, if it's only Eldritch, Decree is probably better than like all the, all the back row removal, right? Because they just a flug a for their anything they can have. Correct. Or, or even just like prohibition to call Golden Lord if, it, if it's actually 75 Eldritch. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, these cards probably only work against Eldritch specifically, and you lose the rest 20% of Adamantium Pater because Decrees just do not doing anything. Right. But if you swap the Decree with, like, evenly, it covers both decks now. All right, you it's heard it first, guys. Even... <laughs> yeah, it's true that evenly is probably, what, slightly worse against uh, Lich compared to Decree. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, now you covers more. Now you are able to cover more situations based on just three spots. Like you, you didn't increase anything in the side. You only changed the three cards for these three spots, but you are able to cover more situations. So like you get better like versatility uh, when you're actually playing a tournament. Mm -hmm. So th this is like how I see. I usually prefer coverage instead of uh, something, unless that's like the best thing to happen. Like token collector probably only works against Link Cross. But it's just so effective against it, and everyone uses it, so you might want to play it. That's an example. Okay, that's a good example. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so a lot of the, uh, I know a lot of people on my channel, like they're, when newer, we're playing a lot more Rogue. So mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear from a perspective as a person that plays a ton of meta, right? Mm -hmm. So on that note, what's your favorite combo deck? I know you play Dragon Link and Infernoble. I'm probably still Dragons. Just because I've been played, I've been played like so many different versions of dragons already, including, um, including the OCG one last year summer because I went back to China and uh, play like two months over there. So uh, that's that's actually how like how and when I learned the basics of the dragon decks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the deck is strong. The deck is now like my my hands. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that, that that's that's why. Also, I was just known for the deck. Right, that's like you're the Dragon Link guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so you have an I've OCG won, deck too, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh uh, well, yeah. When I was in China during last year summer, I did. Okay, and then you sold it afterwards. Is that how that works, or? Not because like majority of the dragon cards, they are not like arch type based. Pretty much, they're just like random dragon cards and can be used like you, you like. You, pl uh, I have my dragon ruler set like from years before, and suddenly the tempest just being played. <laughs> Things like this. Uh, I, I have my like baby black and white from Danger Thunder time, and now suddenly they're playing dragon links. 
Like those are not arch type base, so it's not even like easy to sell everything together. <laughs> I I just still have everything because uh, uh, I like majority of things are not really worth that much anyway. Okay, right, because it's OCG, so the market's different. Yeah. Okay, on to the next question. So, this is a good one. How does it feel to be like a pseudo celebrity in the Yu-Gi-Oh world? Like, do you feel like you deserve it? Like, were there any wins? <laughs> Excuse me, that were based off of like an extremely good top deck uh or is it all skill was it all skill uh there's definitely skill but there's definitely decent like a a crazy amount of luck involved as well uh let me think like my my win from the uds um top eight i lost the dice my opponent goes no more chick mill modern pass yeah he just didn't have anything. Okay. So I got a free game one after I thought I might just be out because my opponent won the dice and he's played Luna like. <laughs> that was top eight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Top four was major- top four was more skill because top four, like at the at the end of the top four, I literally had to finish, like do a board and kill him in like a minute and a half because we're about to be in time oh so i had to like think very well to know what exactly i need to do against a conductor and the same time kill him because i'm so low on life and that's the only way i I think i'm like a couple hundred years of him ak wow yeah was like a minute and a half left but i know i could got it so that that's that game was like pure skill because I know my deck perfectly well. Mm-hmm. And the uh, top, the finals were just more luck. Well, it's also like my opening hand was very bad. It was three hand traps and two cards that normally you look at, you probably think you brick. You, yeah, you don't want to see them. <laughs> yeah, but I <laughs> end with combo with well, like one or two hand traps. I think my hand was like a quick lunge. Plus what? Droll Ash Imperm and a Black Dragon. Something like those, I think. Okay. Okay. I don't remember the details, but I just... <laughs> I think I find a way. I think I quick launch into a rocket. Rocket into Striker. Mm-hmm. No more the Droll. Because I know I'm playing against a Shadal. No more the Droll. Use Striker Dragon. Pop the Droll to add the Rocket back. Use Blue <laughs> Sector on it. Then making to Rom, Rom grab Ravine, Ravine cost the Imperm to send a light in the graveyard to, to turn on the Black Dragon. <laughs> and then get LP Pesty to do things. So you turn, like, hypothetically a Brick Hand into full combo. Because... Yeah, like, I literally sit there for like a whole minute or something just to think, what can I even do here? In the finals, when I when I won the dice roll, I was like, I won the dice roll. Maybe I have a chance. I open my hand. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like finally, like at the end, I still made a board. I ended with uh, Abomination Savage mm-hmm. and with the Aftermath hand because I no more to draw and cost the Imperm. And my opponent's like Shadal and Vogue. I think I just negate something. He should off Fusion and Ash, and that's game. Pretty yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. That that's that was my finals game one and game two I lost because he went he went first and game three I just straight anti spell him. <laughs> yeah, that was my that was my finals. That's the and the luck sometimes comes in clutch, right? Yeah, the anti spell the can't yeah. use Shadow Fusion, you win. Yeah, like the luck definitely matters, but more is like I think for that UDS specifically, there's more skills. Right, and regardless, yeah. like this game is a card game anyway, so there's always has to be a luck factor. Yeah, which is unfortunate, like, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, then back to the original question: like, how do I feel about to be a pseudo celebrity? <laughs> when, when I was like playing the game, things I was like not good. Things was like late eleven when I just started. I never, I always think I'm not bad, but I never think I'm like that amazing or just that good in general. I think I'm just like average, maybe slightly above average. That's how mm-hmm. I usually view myself majority of the time, even till now, maybe. 
So I usually, I have the mindset where I think whatever other people can do, I should be able to do it, right? Right. So that that's how I think. Well, also, um, yeah. So that just like I, I see other people doing well, and I know, I know their deck. I know their less, and I can just figure out why he's doing well. Something like the the answer could just be luck, but that sometimes it happens. Mm-hmm. But that's how I usually see myself. So really, <laughs> I just I just still just become like acting like myself, and that never changed. That's like right. my, that's like my mindset. So oh, I really don't good. feel I really don't feel that much as being like a celebrity, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> also, that like happened kind of after the quarantine start. So I really didn't even go go anywhere, go to like an event or something to feel like that way. That's so funny because people start looking you up. They're like, "Oh man, this is this is the or a Dragon Link guy. This is the <laughs> best one." Like some people even arguably say you're the best combo player in the world, dude. I I have no idea. I just learned the basics in my opinion. <laughs> I just think that's how the deck should be played, and I played it that way. Apparently, I'm already better than majority of the people. <laughs> Sometimes it's it really boils down to the basic, right? Because your mindset's very simple. Yeah. It's like, what is the best card in this format? How do I abuse this mm-hmm. card to the maximum potential? Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. And then also sometimes just be like, how does that should be played? So I played it that way. Mm-hmm. And do the do the most optimal plays, and that's it. That's right. very simple. And that segues cleanly into our final couple of questions. This is going to be a long one, all right? So. Mm-hmm. Are there any crucial skills that you feel other people are lacking when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh? Like very critical skills. Like you go to like locals or something and you see these people making the exact same mistake over and over again. Do you feel like mm-hmm. there's anything you can pinpoint or is it a combination of things or what is it? I don't think so. Well, first of all, my local is actually like quite a good local. It has several like decent competitive players in the area. So I really don't see player like misplay that much, but I think let me see crucial skills. Uh, the thing I know I do a lot is um, or even for the new players, just a good recommendation here. If you feel like you don't know how to do anything or you don't know how it should be, it feel free to not that, uh, like not that good people, not that good results from the tournaments. There's nothing wrong to do it as long as you know how everything works and why everything working that way. Then you then you shouldn't have any problem. If you just not that by like re- blindly grab something, straight copy it and uh, do that, then you are not learning anything. But if you like copy a list, look at it, look at how the combo works, figure out why the combo is being playing this specific way, like trying to play around some specific things. Then you're learning things, then there's nothing wrong to like really net deck that way. Because like net decking the word is like not really sounds good in like the, the, the community, right? It's right, like you copy right. something. But realistically, if you are like learn something, like you, you instead of like you can treat it as you taking a lesson and this that's your material. You just have to learn what's happening over there and learn how things are working that way. Like why I'm why I'm summoning Romulus instead of Fiber first. What are mm-hmm. the what like under what kind of a specific situation if you do this thing in a wrong order that can backfire you against different interruptions? Like they, they, these are the questions I don't think a lot of people think majority of the time, where I do well at least I'm trying to think as much as I can. That's a really, really solid advice because I know even in my locals, right? A lot of people mm-hmm. say, oh, don't neck deck the top players. Like, you're not learning anything. That's their build. That's not your build. But the way I see it is like you can use it as like a baseline, right? Yeah. And you can work your way up from there. There's cards you like and there's cards you don't like. You can figure out which ones you like and which ones you don't like. But as long as you're learning from it and you're kind of molding it in your own personal way or even just take the exact same list if it actually works for you. That's completely fine. Also, there's like a, a thing, like just for example, like you just said, like one of your local people said, 
uh, don't attack their their list, right? Mm -hmm. What if they're like, what if the guy who topped this specific tournament, his list is already the optimal answer for the format, and you you there sitting there thinking you shouldn't net deck, so you shouldn't play the exact same list. So no matter how you do, you go you are going away from the optimal answer. Means no matter how you do, you are making yourself a worse version of him. That is not the way of like uh, thinking, or not a way to improve yourself. <laughs> That's a great way to think about it. <laughs> yeah, for right? sure, right? Dude, like, like the list you see is usually what the first place. Why is he first place? Probably he just had the optimal list there, and you not trying to copy it means you're going away from the optimal answer. Then how are you gonna be expecting yourself improving by doing that? Right, exactly. <laughs> you heard it first from Sean Ping. All right, <laughs> net taking, not the worst idea, right? But it might be one of the best idea if you're just absolutely like stuck or in a bottleneck kind of time. It's never bad to just net deck something as long as you know why. That's important. Mm -hmm. Like you have to understand like the ins and outs of the deck. Don't just be like, oh, I took this list. And I'm just gonna take it to locals. I don't know how to play it, but I'm gonna win. That's not the right mindset to have. That's that's absolutely the that's the net that people are criticizing off. Right. There's like a the wrong like uh term or usage of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this segues very cleanly. You no, know, we're segueing a lot, but so our final question is how do you play the game differently from other players? Uh, so I think I have like a very specific advantage because I was born in China, so I have a group of friends in OCG. Mm -hmm. Also, because uh, as like international, like international students in like different countries. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I've like a, a I have like a connection among the world, just among all the international players. Like before, I get into the pro play section in the whole TCG, right? So I have like big network for the information. I know what's happening, what's actually good, what are the results from tournaments that's in a different continent. Mm -hmm. I have those kind of uh, information advantage. And also because I do talk to my OCG friends very frequently, like they will just send me their results where they were testing their OCG format. And by the meantime, I can just, when TCG get the cards, I can just skip a lot of like testing time and straight you apply their results as much as I can to the TCG. Like sometimes it won't straight apply because OCG and TCG is still like significantly different, right? Yes. Yeah. But on the other hand, but on the other hand, majority of the basics are the same. Like Infernoble, you know how like it's true. Some of the combo is just completely not, completely not, um, Appliable because uh like OCG has only one fiber, so they're trying to do combos with only one fiber. Mm -hmm. But here there's two fibers, so I'm actually able to do more things. It's really just I'm have the advantage to grab information and grab like uh proved data from OCG or even from like other TCG territories and reapply it before everyone even know about it or before everyone see it on some random websites. That's like my one of my advantages. Right. So you have like the first come, like the first yes. first advantage. Like before yeah. we even get any of the product, before we probably even know about it, before we even know it's good. So it also gives you like a market advantage too. Like you know what cards to look out for. Usually like those are not I think the the I think the actual uh, the actual knowledge was like the uh, knowledge you usually don't see don't we're not even able to see anywhere. Like um people everyone saw 3t is a good car right at the very beginning everyone's right. hyping on it and from just my friends testing results in when they're actually playing ocg they were like this car is very very mediocre to a point it's not even good that's like their that's their first hand data first hand responses send it to me mm -hmm. where you should you're just not able to see it anywhere on the internet for a while Right, and if you do, it's kind of niche, right? Because I remember, I like even you do, you probably don't even believe it if you see it online. Right, even, exactly, exactly, because you're like, wait, who is this person? I don't know this person. This guy's from like a different country, right? Yeah, yeah. Like even just finding like top deck lists 
can sometimes be a big pain because you have to go through all these foreign websites and like try to like decipher from this website, this website, this forum. Like I was trying to yeah. find like a OCG top like Rika deck list and it took me at least 40 minutes to find it, man. Whole yeah, 40 it's minutes. Very <laughs> it's yeah. very hard. Also at the end, you might just find that, oh, it's a top that, but it's a local top. <laughs> right, so exactly. <laughs> so it's just tricky, but it, it's, it's kind of funny you say that about 3T because personally, I feel like I just read the card and I'm like, this card's okay. <laughs> yeah. Because it's based on your opponent making an action mm -hmm. you don't have that control you you don't control when they activate the ash or the savage or the whatever so i think like when uh my friend first like in oc they they first got it they test it they were like the car is very mediocre but we still have to get a place that eat just for the future <laughs> just to get prepared so maybe one day it'll be good like really like, really good my, yeah like I, i've said multiple times imagine this car is around doing like Full power zoo format or full power orcus format, mm -hmm. where a monster fight is like almost guaranteed being activated in your turn. Like, imagine you, it's a zoo format, your opponent has a Dryden, you go normal some of your rat peer, they pop, they pop it with Dryden, then you can just 3T take their Dryden, make your tiger mortar reattach the, the rat and just full combo. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so, the same, same case as orcus format, where you can just take your opponent's like thing or Galatea and make yours. Or, like, use any of the other two effects if you need to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, in those formats, the car might just be the best car of the meta. But for in the current format now, where instead of playing, instead of a format playing for resource, it's a format playing for all the wins. This kind of format of the 3T just not a good card. It's like going second, I'd rather just have a better one, which does something. Either a ball wipe, like, evenly lining. Um, an owl like Mr. Mine, or just another owl like Droplet or Droplet or Dark Ruler, things like those. Right. We have resources to all those outs, and then three T yeah. just seem kind of mediocre in comparison. Yeah, it's like very low on like a priority list. If you're going first, then you rather just have like Call by, uh, like in my Noble, I'm playing Midbreaker and Reboot. They don't. They all just seems better than three T. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. If your deck is able, you might even want to play like Desire is still better than 3T if you only try to draw two. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because you get the guaranteed draw anyway. So Yeah, you get a guarantee. So there's like really not many decks that can fully utilize the card and just make the mm -hmm. card very mediocre in the current format. Uh, even when Dragoon comes out later, it's true you can think like, oh, I'm just going to negate a Dragoon and... Uh, uh, I'm just gonna bait the dragoon with something else and take the dragoon and try to OTK. Why don't you just play a kaiju and straight kaiju it? <laughs> right. You instantly out the dragoon and don't have to worry about anything afterwards. <laughs> it's almost too easy to do. <laughs> so those are those are the situations where you have to think whenever you play a card, mm -hmm. or at least that's how I do. Whenever I play the card in my deck. I usually think what kind of situation it will be good. What kind of a... It's like you are, you're writing a script of what possibly can happen. Like, oh, my opponent goes set 4, I evenly him. My opponent has a full rock 4, I go evenly chain droplet. Mm -hmm. Something like those. Those are just... Oh, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. So I guess I'm putting these cards in my deck. Hope, hope that can happen because that's a very common situation to happen, right? Mm -hmm. But 3T is just like... Do some imagination tests. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, that's extremely good. I'm pretty sure my viewers are gonna eat this up real fast. <laughs> so, is there yeah. any last thing you want to say to you know viewers, fans, or shout outs to anybody before he closes out? Um, well, like I, how I usually shout out, just shout out to everyone who helped me, who supported me. Um, especially the Chinese group I, I was in to send me the original dragon ideas. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Take Notes who were like really helping me theorizing things. Also, uh, come, come, come to check my channel now. And uh, I do stream sometimes and uh, post videos like whenever I want. Mm -hmm. I don't have a schedule because I just I like to I like to do whatever I want I, I, whenever I want. <laughs> exactly. Senpai <laughs> Shoes Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. Lab. Make yes. sure you hop in, guys. Mm-hmm.
All right. And that is it for this episode of the Yugi panel. Hope you all enjoyed. And don't forget, everyone, it's time to duel. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Bye. The world ends now.